Our history tells us that Joseph Smith placed a stone to mark the northeast corner of the temple in this area on August 3rd, 1831. And that's it on the right. We found those two stones in 1929 while excavating right out here, expecting to build a temple, which we did not complete because of hard times in the 1930s, the Great Depression. We later filled in the excavation. Those are original inscriptions which we have colored in to make them stand out. On the right it says 40W. The 4 is backwards so it is not confused with a 9. It's a surveyor's 4. And it's according to surveying practice to place a marker off the corner as a witness. That stone was found 40 feet west of the northeast corner of the temple, 40W. This stone here we did not know existed, but it was found 90 feet south of that one, indicating southeast corner temple. 90 feet apart gives the width of the temple, and we have received revelation from God that the length of the temple is 180 feet, so we know where all four corners are to be. They're all marked right out here. The picture just above here shows members of our church on the temple site. That rectangle shape is members of the church. Dimensions are 90 feet by 180. I'm in that picture. That was taken about 1992 at a conference. At the time of the dedication of this spot by Joseph Smith and others, August 3rd, 1831, the property did not belong to the church. It was state property. Four months later, in the month of December, a man by the name of Flournoy bought uh, 80 acres from the state of Missouri, which included this spot of ground. Flournoy was not a member of the church, but just a week later and still in December, he sold 63 acres to Bishop Edward Partridge of the church for $130. We'd say that's a good buy today. It was a lot of money then. Two years later, in 1833, the members of the church were driven from independence here, so they could not hold on to the 63 acres. It was later sold for taxes and remained in private hands outside the church for a number of years. Now I want to tell you how we got a hold of this spot of ground. We are a part of the original Church of Christ, organized by Joseph Smith and others, April 6, 1830, and it was called the Church of Christ. There were four local congregations of that early church that developed around Bloomington, Illinois, one more in Vermilion, Indiana, just across the state line. Those five congregations had elders in their midst ordained as early as 1831 and 2. That's where we had our beginning. The church was only organized in 1830. So we are a genuine remnant of the original church. We have been neither disorganized nor reorganized, which is something that no other Latter-day Saint body can truthfully say. We've come right on down from that early period and did not follow the body that went west with Brigham Young. Those five congregations that I speak of, four around Bloomington, one in Vermilion, Indiana, came together in 1852 and chose Elder Granville Hedrick to be their presiding elder. Hedrick was the presiding elder of what was called the Crow Creek Branch, one of those four around Bloomington. And when they came together and chose him as their presiding elder in 1852, uh, they were called the Crow Creek Branch of the Church. Now, uh, we, uh, we were sometimes called Hedrickites, and there's where the, the term he comes in. It comes from the uh, use of the word Hedrick. Uh, we don't go by that term, but it's all right if people want to call us that. It's a nickname. Hedrick received a revelation of God in 1864, which directed that group around Bloomington there to prepare for 1867, just three years later, at which time the Lord would open up the way by their faith and prayers that they might return here to Independence, Missouri, 
for the gathering of the saints. Well, consider this. In 1864, when that revelation was given, this nation was in the Civil War. Independence was a battleground. The war was principally over the question of slavery, and Missouri was a slave state politically. All the members of the church were opposed to slavery, and that went just like that. It didn't go over. At that time, the members of the church had only been driven from independence 31 years before then, 1833. So the idea of returning here under those circumstances was a fearful thing, but they believed they'd heard from God. And so through faith, about 60 of them came here by wagon train in the winter of 1866 and 7. The first Latter-day Saint group or church to return here after being driven out in 1833. And why not? We happen to be the original church. Their primary purpose was to get this spot of ground, and there were still those with them who had been driven from here in 1833, so they knew where the spot was. By 1877, 10 years later, they had acquired by purchase these eight lots surrounded by the streets, which is two and a half acres, and the Church of Christ has held possession since. We're holding this for the Lord, expecting that in the future He will gather all who are pure in heart. Only the Lord knows who that is, and we're convinced that they can be pe people who are not connected with the Latter-day Saint faith at all among them. There is a revelation through Joseph Smith in which we're told that the city New Jerusalem shall be built by the gathering of the saints beginning at the temple lot right here. And that says something for the Church of Christ. Incidentally, this will not be called Independence, Missouri then. It'll be the New Jerusalem. The revelation says that the city New Jerusalem shall be built by the gathering of the saints beginning at the temple lot. And that says something for the Church of Christ. Incidentally, the reorganized Latter-day Saint Church, now called the Community of Christ, over here in the Big Dome Building, they sued us unsuccessfully in the 1890s for this spot of ground. Knowing then that this was the dedicated spot for the temple, but because they were unsuccessful in that suit, they built their temple across the street here. Well, that's the history part. Do you have any comments or questions?